Well, let's get to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's get to the word of God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the word. It's about to go forward. Lord, give me your word. Speak through your servant to your people here. What is being said for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You got your Bibles out? Yes, sir. Uh, hallelujah. You got your Bibles, got your word out. I'm actually going to go to three different places. You can write them down. If you'll get a chance to turn to them, them, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But I want you to have these verses. Uh, the first verse is 2 Kings 2 and 9. 2 Kings 2 and 9. Uh, the second verse is Isaiah. Isaiah 61, verse 7. Third verse, Ezekiel 47, 13. Ezekiel 47, 13. And 1 Timothy 5, 17. 1 Timothy 5, 17. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And just, I, I heard this, uh, this comedian say this a while back. Have y'all grew up in a household where you, you had to make sure you, that you didn't eat the biggest piece of food because that was safe? Your mama said that to your dad. Yeah. How many of you ever those days? Y'all remember those days? How many of y'all ever saw a TV show where, <laughs> where daddy wasn't an idiot, but he was revered in the household? Amen. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, well, Chris Rock said this, and I, I thought it was kind of funny. He said, uh, what, do, what, what, what do daddies get for hard work? He said, they get the biggest piece of chicken at dinner. He said, my mom would kill us if we ate the biggest piece of chicken, even by accident. He said, uh, if, you miss, if you mistakenly ate the biggest piece, your mom would be like, why did you eat that chicken? Oh, Lord, oh, God, why did you eat that daddy's chicken? Why did you eat that chicken? I got to make some more chicken for him. We ain't got no chicken in the house. I got to sauce some chicken together. Leave me two beans and pork chop. We're going to put it together. That ain't going to look different. Because we ain't got a chicken. Amen. <laughs> two beans and a pork chop. Hallelujah. Uh. I got tickled by that because I thought about it, you know, that there is a, a, a time in certain uh, places where you want that big piece. Amen. Mm. How many of y'all been living? Come on now. How many of y'all been living eating and you've been, as, as it got lower and lower? You were looking at that one piece of chicken or one piece of pizza. Because the pizza, you ever had a pizza that's cut incorrectly? Yeah. yeah. And then that two pieces, one's a sliver and one's really big. How many of y'all were like, you know, you eating your one piece, but you're trying to eat it fast and you watch something else about to put it out. Trying to out eat good, but you're trying to get that big piece of pizza. Mm -hmm. Oh, tell the truth, shake it up. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, I want that. I want that. Matter of fact, it's double the size of the last piece. It's not. You got one sliver. Y'all don't even want to admit y'all want it. God knows you want it in your heart. You might just admit it. But God uh -huh. already knows your heart. Because he knows that they want that piece. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Or oh, maybe, okay, I can't listen to y'all on that then. Okay. How about this? How many of you all get excited when you see someone say, buy one? You want free. Yay! Yeah. 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 Oh, they, they want now. They want now. <laughs> buy one. Yeah. Get one free. Yeah. Like, I got some money, I'm about to You know, I've been, hey, sometimes you go to a restaurant, but I won't be like, well, I got dinner tonight. I got one of them Or maybe how many of y'all like double coupons? Yeah. They had a coupon, and they're like, yeah. yeah. Hey, Amen. It's about double, tell you that, it's about double. Uh -huh. It's something about when you get yeah. double for your trouble. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But today I want to talk to you from Kingdom Knowledge. And it's called the double blessing. How many of y'all want a double blessing? Yeah. I want to be blessed. I want to be doubly blessed. Uh -huh. And so that's what we're going to change tonight. Now I'm going to read those verses I shared with you. And then we're going to change the answer. 2 Kings 2 9 says this. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. Mm -hmm. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion. Of yeah. your spirit on me. Yeah. Isaiah 61 7. Instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Instead of this honor, they shall rejoice in their lot. Therefore, in the land, they shall possess a double portion. Amen. Ezekiel 47 13. The Lord, uh, thus said the Lord God, this is the boundary by which you shall divide the land for inheritance. Among the 12 tribes of Israel, Joseph shall have a double portion. Mm -hmm. And then 1 Timothy 5, 17. That the elders who do well be considered worthy of double honor, mm -hmm. especially those who labor and preach 
preaching and in teaching. Talk about double one. Somebody tells you double, you know it's special. Uh -huh. And today I want to talk to you about this blessing and, 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 and understanding what it means to be doubly blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, 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 the analogy comes from if you go back to Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. um, is verse, chapter 21, verse 17. God talks about some conditions about the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And he said this. He tells the man, he said, if you have two children or two sons, by two different wives, you have two wives and you have two children, but you, you love one wife, but you don't really care as much for the other wife, but the wife you don't care about has a child first, mm -hmm. and the other wife has a child, then you got to make that first child the, the child of honor. Mm -hmm. And understand the inheritance, the older child, mm -hmm. oh yeah, twice as much. Mm -hmm. right. So if you had three children, you split it four ways. So one child got a double portion, because their job was to carry on the business of the family. How many y'all understand this? God left you and me here yeah. to carry on the business of his family. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That makes you and him, his daughter, his son, and the Bible said he had no respect of person. Amen. Which means God wants to position you for a double blessing today. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's chase this thing. Let me help you understand something. The first blessing, you already got it. If you were God's child, you already got the first blessing. Uh -huh. The first blesson was propitiation. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. like, I don't know that word, but I know about seven eight. You know that word, Lord, this morning for you. Yeah, yeah. They're my scholars. That was their homework for this week. Yeah. Propitiation. I thought they were like, propitiation. <laughs> 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 How many of y'all struggle to be honest? When you first read that word, you say, I don't know what that word is. Okay. <laughs> propitiation, uh, whatever. <laughs> what does Pastor get these words from? What does it mean to? But because God has already propitiated you. Amen. I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it up. <laughs> God's already positioned you Amen. for blessing. Yeah. See, when God called you uh, out of darkness into light, and you responded to that through salvation, then the blessing of God already flew on you. How God already blessed your life? Yeah. You already got some blessing in your life already. That's the first blessing. And in that blessing, this is what God gave you. He gave you and me and everybody else gave you time and talent for your life. Amen. God put some time on your life. In other words, on the clock, God said, go. You got some time? Mm -hmm. And God put some talent inside of you. Amen. He put some stuff. I'm not talking about the spiritual gifts. I'm saying there's some natural things that you can do that God puts inside of you. Yeah. You know, I, I, I see Sister Sid, she's quiet, but y'all saw that song come on. Wait. Oh, Uh, I got a test. I 
my best for you. And five minutes before it's too late. Little side note, DMCU, I love y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all what you love. I can tell <laughs> when you realize the homework was just due <laughs> and you slid it in. Mm. It doesn't even sound like you. Mm. I'm just gonna let you know. Wow. I mean, if you get the homework assignment on, on Monday mm -hmm. and it's due at 10 o'clock on Saturday, mm. and I get it at I ain't so much time because y'all know who I'm talking to. <laughs> let's just say, if, if, your, if it's like, it's like, oops, <laughs> I got homework, it's pretty obvious, amen? Right? Yeah. Now, you might get it done, but let's be honest. Was it your best? It was, was it thoughtful? Mm. Thank God the deacon said that was a reminder. Amen. <laughs> she said that was like an ancient Chinese secret. I she put that next to <laughs> But sometimes, or we pause on the time, or we have the talent that we don't develop the talent, mm -hmm. and so we don't get the maximization mm -hmm. out of what God put inside of us. Mm -hmm. And remember, we talk about economics, let's be real. I'm gonna talk about money. Mm -hmm. We ain't gonna get so spiritual, because you know what I mean? Oh, money is spiritual. Come on now. And then money is spiritual. Okay. Now I don't wanna go to church and talk about money. Now I wanna go hear about Jesus. Jesus talked about money. Mm -hmm. He sure did. You go read the scripture. Jesus talked yeah. about money all the time. Yes, he did. Because Jesus said, I can tell about your spiritual condition the way you handle your money. Yeah. So it's a reflection on who you are spiritually. So if I'm going to build your spiritually, i got to teach you about how to handle your resources. Mm -hmm. And so he says um, that we have to understand we have to take our time and talent to build treasure, but treasure that promotes his kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let me give you four quick points here with some sub points and you'll get, you'll get something out of this preference. First is this. When you invest your treasure in God's house, you put yourself in God's house. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says where man's treasure is, that's where his heart's going to be. Amen? Uh -huh. So, wherever you, wherever you put your money, mm -hmm. your, your emotions are going to be there. Mm -hmm. If you put some money into who you are, you're dating, you're going to be emotionally attached to them. Yeah, you will. Amen? Amen. 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 You put your money in somebody and you, and you have a good time and you're dating, you like you look like you buy a nice gift they wear. You have to go, oh, that looks cute on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy something they don't wear with you, they wear to everybody else. You might have some issues, don't you? Hey, oh, right. Who you hanging out with? <laughs> you without me, like cornflakes without the milk. Don't forget that. Your trust 
is in them. Yes. Yeah. I don't believe you should have not hold people accountable, mm -hmm. but I don't trust wicked men to be my security. Amen. Amen. I don't. Amen. I really don't. It, and listen, just be, just be real. Politics aside, but anyway, uh, Genesis is good. Uh, 
Uh, point number two in the principle of double blessings is you got to understand calling and career. Calling and career. Your calling is your mission. Your career is your provision. Your calling is your mission. It's your divine assignment from God. Your career is provision. God gives you resources for your career to complete your call. Too many times when we surround with our career, we forget the call. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to chase the provision. I understand the provision is for a mission. God said, I'm providing for a mission, but you got to understand that the mission takes priority. Amen. 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 You got to get grasp that. To the kingdom, God's kingdom is all about his mission. Mm -hmm. he, he gives you some, some, some skills, some talent, and some time, mm -hmm. and you develop that, and you go out and make some treasure. Well, the treasure is to take care of your needs yeah. while you complete the mission. Yeah. Too many times we forget the mission, and we think the mission is to get more stuff. Mm. Listen, I'm not anti-stuff, but the older I get, the more I realize how little stuff satisfies me. Yeah. 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 You don't find that you get some stuff. Matter of fact, we turn into hoarders. We have a whole lot of stuff, and you're like, I don't know how to get this stuff of the bread. I had two of them. I left Nicky had a baby in my basement. And now I got more stuff I got to get rid of. So now we all trying to sell each other our stuff. We're going to work with you. Take my junk. You take my junk. And we're going to sell some junk. And we're going to hold on to people selling junk to each other. Like, man, we just bought some junk sisters. So we have to get back to mission. Yeah. Understanding God's mission for us. God's mission is first priority number one. And listen, when, when, you, when you understand God's general mission, then he can give you your specific mission. Mm -hmm. That's your call. Mm -hmm. So we call it a true call to advance his kingdom. Mm -hmm. But then each of us are given different times and talent and treasure to accomplish different things in the mission. We don't all play the same role. Mm -hmm. um, a few years back, um, it was the playoffs, and I think it was Seattle, Green Bay. And there was one side kick. Seattle lose the game. The only way they can win the game is to, to, to get the ball. Those, I don't have time to play outside kick. Those who want the ball, you know, you kick the ball 10 yards, and you've got to try to beat the other team to it, get it, knock their head off, get the ball. Mm -hmm. All Green Bay has to do is catch the ball, fall around. That's it. Mm -hmm. Ain't got to run nothing. Catch the ball, fall around. They got their best, we call it the hands team, people who can catch. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a tight end, I think Jordan Nelson, he's up there. And everybody knows this dude got some of the best hands in the league. Mm -hmm. It's coming his way. The, all Jordan's like, I'm going to catch this. I'm going to fall. We're going to a Super Bowl. Mm. Behind him, out of nowhere, comes this dude. I don't even know his name. He runs in front of Jordan Nelson <laughs> to get the ball and fumbles it. <laughs> and the other team gets the ball oh. and win the game. And everybody on the team is looking like, you idiot. What were you thinking? You're not even on the hands to he was that one guy who never get a chance to shine. He's like, I'm going to make my name. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. <laughs> and it cost them the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And many people never make it to the Super Bowl. Right. And, and the, the word came up. There was talking to Bill Belichick about it, mm -hmm. a dude who leads the Patriots. He said, every man on the team needs to understand what their son is. And I don't want you to try to do everything. I just want you to do your job. Yeah. If we all do our job, imagine what we accomplish. Everybody in position yeah. to do their job. In the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Your natural gift is how God designed you to produce your provision. The thing that God put inside you that you're good at, that's what God designed for you to make your living at. Mm -hmm. So you got to find out that your parents, that's why it's so critical to watch your children uh -huh. so you can find their giftings right. and help push in that area. Yeah. Okay, your son ain't gifted in math. He still got to pass math, but don't try to make him a mathematician because that ain't going to get to that. Right. Right. If he can speak well, okay, maybe he's going to be on TV doing some new, read the news. And you mad because he can't do fractions. You ain't that good at fractions yourself. <laughs> find what you do well. Yeah. Minimize what you do bad, but find other people who right. do what you can't do yeah. and put them around you. Yeah. I know I can't be on the dance team. Well, I can if I want to. I'm just trying to go right, right. But I'm just saying. Right. My 55 year old dad might not be like that 25 year old dad. Amen. Right. Twisted out, Gary Gallon, you know, we got rid of the trip. Uh, <laughs> so, 
I better ask somebody. <laughs> but I can't do what they can do. They can do what I can do. But there's some things that Mo can't do, that I can't, I can't do, that he can't. As we get together, it makes a sweet melody. Yes, it does. When we, we flow together, and I'm like, this brother good at this, and then it's called harmony. Yeah. Yeah. And God says, when, when we get a position, mm. and we understand calling and career, yeah. man, the harmony it can make. But yeah. your success is going to be really in finding and developing the stuff that God needs to give you. That's why it's so critical to hear what Sister Faith said. Yeah. You might have some career options you didn't know, or you might be going the wrong direction and say, I need to make a change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to make a change. Yeah. And stay flexible, y'all. Uh -huh. But God will change up your career. Yes, he will. Yes. Just ask me. Yes. Yes. He will change up your career. Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, point number three. Uh, when God knows that you will honor him with your income and your outcome, mm -hmm. he'll be delighted to double bless you. When he knows that you will honor him with your income, what comes in, mm -hmm. but also your outcome, what you're producing, what you're sitting, what you're, what you're accomplishing. See, sometimes we, we want to honor God when we ain't got nothing. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I would pray, Lord, if you bless me, I'm going to serve you, I'm going to do oh, something, yeah. Lord, you count on me, God. Oh, Lord, yeah. Lord. Yeah. And now we might honor, but how many times, see, I'm all of us, when we forgot, we prayed to God about it. When we were going through tough times, like, Lord, if you bring me out, I will never, ever be here again. And the hardest thing is not trusting the Lord and serving Him when we got nothing. We have some blessings. It so is. When you got blessings, that's really the test. Mm. You know what you find out what people really like when they get some money? Well, okay. You'll find out what folks like when they get some money. Mm -hmm. When they have to depend on you, know. But folks be nice to you when they need a ride. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. They yeah. didn't borrow some. You know how people borrow money? You be nice to you when they borrow. They have an attitude with you when they come into some money because they, they owe you money. And you, have, you have the nerve to ask them for the money that they owe you. Say that. They have the nerve to tell you, why you don't even ask, you don't even need it. Well, you just Say have the attitude now. like this when you borrow. Right. Right. Mm. So we got to understand, God wants to know, if I can give you the income, will the outcome you produce bring glory to me? Mm. See, if God can't trust you with it, you might get it, but God ain't blessing it. You might say, well, God, let's go. You just got some natural talent. There are people who are naturally talented. Oh, yeah. There are people out here, listen, there are criminals out here who are doing really well, but they're naturally gifted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You, you, cannot, you cannot not understand mathematics and be a good drug dealer. I'm not advocating drug dealing. What are you talking about? Kilo, convert pounds to kilo. Couldn't none of us be in the game. They're like, oh, I don't even know. They're like, I just, I just gave my partner with the game on the left. <laughs> Because you get, but, but then to be able to go and measure and, and look at stuff, that's just a little short, man. That's about two ounces short. You yeah. got to have some kind of brain. Yeah. You have a market plan in place. Now imagine if you did that on the legit. Right. Right. That's talent. Amen. You got to put something inside of you. Mm -hmm. well, I'm quiet. I'm shy. I'm introverted. You know what? You might be able to cope with it. We put you in the room by yourself. You can cope. Right. Lord. And you can do well there. Yeah. You ain't got to be in front of people all the time. You don't. But what if God gives you that? But God says, can I trust you? Mm -hmm. Will the outcome that you produce, will you make me your high priority? Will it bring me glory? Mm -hmm. And if you do, you'll be like Matthew 25, those talents. He gave them God's talents. And they went out, the one who had five double heads, double fortune. Mm -hmm. The one who had three double heads. Mm -hmm. The wicked and lazy one didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Don't be a wicked and lazy one. Be the one who will do double. Four point, do the home stretch. When you and I cultivate a double blessing mindset, and we get focused on flipping blessings, be ready for God to open the windows to pour our blessings. We don't have room enough to receive them. Mm -hmm. we, we have a flip the blessing mindset. Come on, y'all. Y'all see these teachers, they flip houses. Yes. And then they go in, they take something, they got all that great. Mm -hmm. And you look at it, it's like, I don't know, I want to live that. Ooh, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. You ever see those shows where they, they do that big reveal? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they yeah. open those doors, yeah. like, yeah. oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But you think about how many people right now, it, just in the natural, are flipping houses and making money? What blessing does God want you to flip? Mm. There's something God got for you to flip. Mm. He said, I'm going to give you something, and then you flip it. Those people in, the, in, the, in Matthew 25, they were flipping blessings. Mm. They would take what God gave them, and they were flipping them and multiplying, and they were saying, Father, look at you gave me five. I brought you back. You got ten now. Mm. What did he say? Well done. He said, you did so well. I'm going to give you some more. How y'all want more? We talked about more last week. Yeah. Yeah. Flip the blessing that God has already given you. Don't. Quit waiting for some, some miracle.
mirror what happened. Yeah. And start where you are. Yeah. Start by surrendering what you got away to the Lord. This is yours. Everything you got is that you gave me is yours. Every talent I got. Every minute of my life is yours. Thank you, Lord. God, I surrender to you. Yeah. And Lord, you do for what you want to do it, and you put grace on me to do it. Amen. 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 And you watch how God, God begin to open the window, and you'll start to see yourself in. Has a career success. How many of y'all ever in a position that you never saw yourself being in your career when you first started out? When you were a student, you said, I can imagine doing this. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm so afraid that you still never going to find out. Like, I didn't get this position. Well, <laughs> right. we all been in a position where you had a job and you've been going through training. How many of y'all talked to and got a job and went hey, training? Hey, yeah. And you sit there thinking, like, oh, oh God, oh, God, what do they mean? Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> what do they mean? How'd you open a spreadsheet? <laughs> what is a power? What's the PowerPoint and an Excel. Well, Jesus. Oh, let me call somebody right quick. Right, right. Can you, can you, can you just watch my screen and tell me what I'm doing? Right. <laughs> oh, you have it. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I'm like, Lord, Lord, if you don't help me, God, they're gonna be really bad. Well. <laughs> if you don't help me, Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm representing you, God. We're gonna walk the door, Lord. You better, you better come through for me, Lord. <laughs> Amen. But when we have a mindset, I'm here to put the blessing God gave me. Yeah, yeah. Watch what God does. Amen. I'm going to close with this. Um, there's a man named Jonas Hanway. He's a very famous British guy. He's buried in Westminster Abbey, which is the, most, the greatest honor you can have to be buried in Westminster Abbey if you are a British citizen. That's where Queen Elizabeth I is buried. Mm -hmm. uh, Sir Isaac Newton is buried. Charles Dickens is even Charles Darwin is buried there. A number of different people. It's, it's very famous. Mm -hmm. And he's buried there. And he was a very famous sea captain and a very successful merchant. He became very wealthy. Uh, he became a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he opened homes for the homeless. All these things. He did all these great things. But that's not what he's most famous for. He's most being the first man to carry a portable roof. Mm -hmm. A portable roof. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a portable roof is. No. It's called an umbrella. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first man in all of Great Britain. Because up to those times, it was only considered for women. Mm. And it was like almost like men, you just got there and get so It's a sign of manliness. You just walk in the storm and get so and he said, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> and he said, well, I'm going to carry one of the things. Talk about me how you want. <laughs> but I'm going to carry one. But you know what? It, 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 it brings it to, to, to image something. It brings to image. You think of an umbrella. Uh, and then I've learned these things. Some of you guys know I made a career transition and I'm doing insurance now. I'm going to plug. You know, and I try to get y'all to come see me like that. But one thing that I didn't know about, and I understand more about, it's called PLP, or umbrella policy. Liability protection, which basically says it covers everything. Anything I do, it will cover me if, if, if I do that. Mm -hmm. And so I thought about like the double blessings kind of like that. Mm -hmm. See, the first blessing you get is just being in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. But that second blessing is an umbrella blessing. Okay. It's in the midst of the storm mm -hmm. that God said, I'm going to cover you mm -hmm. when you're going through life situations. Because yeah. we all know there's going to be storms in life. It's going to be some rain, it's going to be some wind, it's going to be some hail. It doesn't mean you're not going to go through storms when you die kid. Don't believe that lie. If I tell you that, that's not the truth. Matter of fact, you don't know face the storms when you die kid or not. And Christ, some more, if you are God's kid, you're going to have a badge. So you're going to go through some storms. But like John Hanway, he said, why should I just go through the storm when there's a device to protect me? He reached up and said, I got the blessing, but I'm going to put a double blessing on my head. And I'm going through the storms, and stuff may come, and it looks quicker. Get to me or whatever, but guess what? God's gonna carry me through every storm yeah. that I go through. His yeah. blessing is gonna be on everything yeah. I do. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna get a big golf umbrella so my wife can walk with me yeah. in the storm and my kids can be under the storm yeah. with me. So no matter where I'm going, the blessing of God is an umbrella yeah. over me. God says, You're already blessed by the foundation, but you need a blessing on your resources. You need a blessing when you go through that storm, and I will be the blessing over you when you honor me with the Yes. 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 Yes.